If you clicked on this video, chances are you're trying to figure out how to make the best out of the new year. So come along with me as I give you the tips and tricks on how I plan to make the best out of my 2024 and meet those goals that I have set for myself. Welcome back. Happy New Year. I hope you had an amazing holiday season. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lixie and this is Lixie et al. On today's video, we're going to go through the action plan that I have set for myself to make sure that I actually stick to my New Year's resolutions rather than just dropping them by the end of January. So I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks and I'm going to be talking about some of my goals along the way. My first tip to ensure that you actually get your goals completed this year is to choose a handful of goals. With the excitement of the new year, we often make enormous lists with all the goals and resolutions of things that we want to achieve throughout the year. The problem with that is that it's too much and life happens. We have responsibilities, we have time sensitive things that we need to get done. We have unexpected things that end up happening throughout the year. And when life starts going back into its regular rhythm, we're just busy. So if we have too many goals, it's not realistic for us to think that we're going to achieve every single one of them because we have other things that we have to do. And the problem is that because we don't see ourselves making progress in a lot of these goals, we end up unmotivated, which leads us to dropping the goals that we actually wanted to work on because it just becomes like too much. It becomes a burden rather than something exciting to look forward to. When we focus on a smaller amount of goals, that actually helps us because we have a very clear idea of what it is that we want to do. We can focus on those specific things. And the beauty of that is that because we're focusing on smaller things and making them work with our schedules, we end up becoming a creature of habit. Once we have that goal, whatever it is, into our daily routine or schedule, depending on how that fits in, we actually end up having the ability to add on more goals later on because we master those very few ones in the beginning. So I would suggest maybe having five, six at most that are very clear, very specific, and that you can turn into tangible steps. This brings me to my second tip, which is grab your goals and then divide them into smaller, manageable, doable steps. Oftentimes we look at our goals and we've been having probably the same goal for years and years and years. And we're just confused as to why this is not happening. Why am I not achieving X or Y goal? Well, probably because we're not taking actions towards that goal. The way to do this is by breaking it down into steps and thinking, what can I do right now that will bring me a little bit closer to that goal? Maybe you have a really, really big goal of, I don't know, buying a house. But buying a house on itself is a difficult thing. So one way that you could get closer to that goal is by, for example, opening a savings account only for that purpose. And then another step can be taking out $5 or $10 from your paycheck. Obviously $5, $10 is gonna take you forever to buy a house. But the, the point of this is actually taking steps because it's better to save five or $10 than not save anything at all. So by saving a little bit of money here and there, and then in the future, adding a little more of money and you know, you start just taking all these steps to saving the money that you need to buy a house. Maybe another step that you could do would be learning about the different types of loans. That already is going to put you at a better place because you have extra knowledge that you probably didn't have before. And so on and so forth, you will find little things that you can do here and there that before you even realize that you're going to be closer to your goal. My third tip for achieving your goals this year is to plan ahead. Like I mentioned before, life is going to get in the way. Responsibilities are going to kick in. The day-to-day -day rhythm of life is going to kick in. And it's going to take your time 
your motivation and your energy. So you have to prepare for those things. When you're setting your goals, you cannot set them as an unrealistic version of yourself and also an unrealistic version of your day-to-day -day life. You have to work with what you have and where you are in your life right now so that you can turn it into that life that you want to have. Make sure that when you're doing your list and you're thinking about your goals, you're not solely thinking at how you feel at the time that you're doing it because chances are you're working on this when you're on break, which means that you have the time and the energy to actually work on those things. But the reality is that your break is not going to last forever and your goals are going to need to keep going even when you're back into your regular rhythm. So make sure that you plan ahead, that you take into consideration what your days look like and what would happen if you suddenly have less time to do X, Y, or Z. Something that I'm definitely going to be working on this year when it comes to this tip is my content creation. I have a lot of time right now in my hands. But like I've mentioned before, I think in my vision board video, I am looking for a job and I know it's going to cut significantly my time and my energy to actually work on my videos. And so continuing doing YouTube is something that I want to do at a regular basis, do better than what I've been doing so far. So I have to work with that. I have to come up with a plan, which I actually already did, come up with a plan on when, where, I can actually record and what I'm going to be recording that is still manageable with a work schedule. Obviously, I don't have a work schedule right now, so I can't adjust that plan specifically for the hours that I'm going to be working. But I already have an idea on how to work on my plan and my video recording and editing and all the steps that I need to take in order to post a video. So when the time comes that I actually have a full-time schedule, then I will just have to make an adjustment rather than having to make a drastic switch from having all the time in the world to actually barely having any time or energy. Tip number four might be a little controversial and it definitely will be different to what you would expect from someone that gives advice on how to achieve your goals. My fourth tip is Plan ahead knowing yourself and play with your strength. Don't try to take on ways of achieving goals that are not realistic and doable for you. Yes, I know that we need to have discipline, that we have to stop making excuses, that we have to turn our habits into those that are going to bring us closer to our goals. And the list goes on on all the things that we should be doing in order for us to be successful. The problem is that oftentimes people that talk about these kinds of things, they come up with these very rigid, very unflexible ways for us to follow and achieve goals. And when we try them and then they don't work for us, we feel like a failure. Well, that's because we are not that person. Maybe that very strict, very specific rigid plan works for them either because of their personality, their mindset, the type of lifestyle and responsibilities that they have, or what is very likely they've been working on becoming that person for years and years and years and they're only now talking about it. You cannot compare their 100th day with your day one. It's not the same thing, it's not going to feel the same way, and it's not going to work out the same. It's just not. So if you're someone like me that I don't do well at all with very rigid, very strict plans, then make sure that you know yourself well enough or that you continue to get you to know yourself well enough so that you can come up with a plan that works for you, specifically for your lifestyle, for the way your mind and your body work. Because we go through different motions. We go through different changes throughout the months, throughout the week, throughout the years. So it is important that you know when and where you're feeling your best so that you can work on those goals. It's okay to take breaks. It's okay to not do something for a couple of weeks and then get back on it. The problem is not if you stop here and there. The problem is that you just abandon it because you think you're not good enough. We have a lot of talk about, oh, you're wasting time. You're doing this, you're doing that. 
there I saying, one, this is not a race. Two, you don't have to compare your speed to other people's speeds. And three, people often say like, oh, you have to achieve these things before you reach a certain age or before you die or whatever. More often than not, that doesn't really matter. Because if you're alive, you still have time to do it. And if you're not alive, then you're not alive. You're not here. So what does it matter anymore? You, you're not going to take anything with you except for what you learn and what you live. So what is important to me is the journey. Who am I becoming and what am I learning as I go through the motions and through the steps of achieving X, Y, or Z goal? Am I going to get there eventually? Hopefully. But before I can do that, I need to get to know myself and what works for me. So for example, I know that I am not always going to be in the same mental space to always want to record a YouTube video, for example. Then I know that I have to take advantage of the days that I feel great. Because yes, there is such a thing as struggling. There is such a thing as mental health difficulties. There is such a thing as health conditions. There's a lot of different things that get in the way of you achieving the things that you want to achieve. And oftentimes, we dismiss the things that are inevitable and out of our control and beat ourselves down because we think that those things make us any less or that we're never going to achieve our goals because we're struggling. That's not true. The truth is that as long as you're putting in effort, at some point you're going to get there. Yes, consistency works. Yes, the more often you work on something, the faster and the better you're going to get at it because it's going to be building a muscle for you. But if that's not always doable, that's fine. You're going to continue learning about yourself and what works for you as you continue going. So the plan that you make for yourself right now, based on the information that you know about yourself right now, might not be the same plan that you're going to have in the next six months, maybe to a year from now. So make sure to always do what works for you. Yes, you can take advice from anyone that you want. You can look up to anyone that you want. But pick and choose what tips and tricks work for you. Even this video that I'm making, yeah, I'm giving you tips. But these are the tips that work for me. So it's your responsibility and it's your goal, I guess, for you to actually see if these things are going to work for you. Maybe they don't. Maybe none of these work for you. Well, you have the opportunity of choosing what actually works for you because it's your life. And that is the beauty of it. You get to customize it and work on it the way that you want. I know some people don't believe in that and they say that this is kind of lazy. But the reality is that you actually have to want to get there. If you're being miserable in the process, you're just going to drop out and not do anything. My fifth and final tip is don't go at it alone. And that doesn't mean that you need to have this whole team of people that are working towards the specific exact same thing that you are. It can just be a best friend or a parent, a cousin, someone that you can talk about the things that you're trying to achieve and that can keep you motivated. It can be someone that can hold you accountable, someone that can give you advice, someone that can give you a fresh perspective when you're trying to work towards your goals. It can even be an online community. I know there's a lot of groups online that focus on giving support to each other so that we can work on things. They share knowledge, they share tips, they share tools. Even finding someone on YouTube that is doing something that you want to do and watching their videos often, that can be very helpful. But I definitely believe that you should have someone that you can talk to directly and that can help you overcome any sort of issue or hurdle you get in the process. So definitely, definitely try to find your support team, your go-to person that you talk to. And it doesn't even have to be someone that you talk to all the time. It can be someone that you talk to maybe once a month and you give updates to, or someone that you talk about whenever you have a chance. Maybe it's just your best friend that you talk to every day, but you just touch on the topic that is related to your goal here and there. The important thing is having that support because having someone there that believes in you and that supports you and that gives you ideas is going to make it easier and you won't feel so alone while you work on your goals. Those are all the tips that I have 
for how we can work on our goals and achieve them this new year. I'm now going to go through the goals that I have that I already kind of mentioned them, but I want to go more in depth and give you a bit more detail on what I'm thinking on how I'm going to be trying to achieve them. So it's five goals, like I mentioned only. Do a handful, don't go crazy making really long lists. So my first goal is being consistent with YouTube. I say this a lot. I feel like this is one of the goals that I often struggle with the most. And so I want to continue working on getting to know myself and what works for me so that I can actually show up on YouTube better. I have a plan, I have ideas, I have a calendar that I'm using. So I'm definitely already taking steps towards making a huge impact on this this year. One of my goals will definitely be missing as little as possible when it comes to posting weeks. So making sure that I post more weeks in the year than the weeks that I don't post. I am not going to set myself the expectation of not missing a single week. What I do want to work on is making sure that I know that even if I miss a week or two, it's fine. I can keep going. So that's for goal number one. Goal number two is getting a big girl job and also starting a business. That is a lot and I know that. So my idea right now is to focus on getting the big girl job. Just a job that I'm happy in and a job that more closely aligns to the things that I've gone to school for and that I know my skill sets are in. And then the whole starting a business thing is more going to be working slowly towards the steps that will bring me closer. I know there's a lot of things that I still need to learn and steps that I need to take before I can even launch a business. So I'm going to be working on those at a slower pace and definitely going to be working on getting the job because your girl needs income. So that's, that's my idea on that aspect. Goal number three is slowing down my reading. I read a lot. Every year since 2020, I've been setting these enormous reading goals that have been, like I've been achieving them, but they've definitely been stressful. I often end up going for audiobooks because I can get through them quicker, but oftentimes those audiobooks, I don't actually remember what the book was about. So I want to make sure that I have a more immersive experience. So for 2024, my reading goal is going to be completely different. It's going to be lower and you're going to see that in an upcoming video. And I'm definitely going to prioritize my TBR because I always say that I want to make a dent in it. And I actually don't, but I keep buying books. So I want to allow myself to read slower because I beat myself down a lot for not being a quick reader when it comes to physical or ebooks. So I'm just going to make it a habit of reading a little bit every day, even if it's not a ton, rather than getting frustrated and not reading at all because I feel like, oh, I'm not going to make a lot of progress because I'm not a fast reader. So I definitely have to work on that one. My fourth goal for this year is paying attention to my physical and mental needs. I often kind of ignore what my body and my mind are telling me. And when I actually pay attention, I realize that I function better. And I move forward in the things that I want to achieve better than when I just try to push through and deal with it. Like dealing with it doesn't always cut it. It just forces things to get worse. So I definitely want to pay more attention on how I feel and make sure that I am working with it instead of against it. And my final goal is increasing my movement and my intake of fruits and veggies because like I've mentioned before, I don't do a great job at that. I have a pretty sedentary life and I do forget a lot to eat veggies and eat fruits, which are great for the body. So I'm definitely going to find fun ways that I will feel more inclined to actually do those things because I definitely struggle with actually doing them mostly because they feel like a burden. And so for the movement aspect, I'm probably going to start trying to go out more, even if it's just walking around the neighborhood and also playing Just Dance because I love Just Dance. So if I love what I'm doing, I'm more likely to do it. This is what I mean. I'm not going to go like, oh, I'm going to go to a gym. Or I'm going to start this exercise routine because that's just not going to work for me. I don't like it. If I don't like it, I'm not going to do it. It's going to feel like a burden. I'm just going to quit. So I have to do it in a way that I feel happy and that I'm having fun. Then when I feel better, I'll work my way all 
up to having an exercise routine but as of right now i have to work with myself instead of against myself same with the, with the fruits and veggies thing just incorporating little things here and there eventually are going to take me to eat more balanced meals rather than trying to force myself to an unrealistic standard and then not wanting to actually stick to it because it feels too strict that is the key working with yourself not against yourself so that is all i have for today's video thank you so much for watching make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so yet and click the notification bell so that you know whenever i upload a new video also remember to follow me on threads instagram and tiktok as elixir at all and thank you so much i will catch you on the next one bye